JATO acronym for Jet Assisted Takeoff, is a type of assisted takeoff for helping overloaded aircraft into the air by providing additional thrust in the form of small rockets. The term JATO is used interchangeably with the more specific term RATO, for Rocket Assisted Takeoff or, in RAF parlance, RATOG, for Rocket Assisted Takeoff Gear. Topic: Early experiments and World War II. Early experiments using rockets to boost gliders into the air were conducted in Germany in the 1920s, Lippisch Ente, and later both the Royal Air Force and the Luftwaffe introduced such systems in World War II. The British system used fairly large solid fuel rockets to shoot planes, typically the Hawker Hurricane, off a small ramp fitted to the fronts of merchant ships known in service as catapult armed merchantmen or cam ships in order to provide some cover against German maritime patrol planes. After firing, the rocket was released from the back of the plane to fall into the water and sink. The task done, the pilot would fly to friendly territory if possible or parachute from the plane, hopefully to be picked up by one of the escort vessels. Over two years the system was only employed nine times to attack German aircraft with eight kills recorded for the loss of a single pilot. The Luftwaffe also used the technique with both liquid-fueled units made by the Walter firm and BMW, and solid fuel, themselves made both by the Schmidting and WASAG firms, as both firmly attached and jettisonable rocket motors, to get airborne more quickly and with shorter takeoff runs. These were used to boost the takeoff performance of their medium bombers, and the enormous 55 meter wingspan gigant, Messerschmitt Me 321 glider, conceived in 1940 for the invasion of Britain, and used to supply the Russian front. The enormous Mi 321s originally had air tow assistance from up to three Messerschmitt Bf 110 heavy fighters in a so called Troika Schlepp arrangement into the air with loads that would have made the takeoff run too long otherwise, but with much attendant risk of aerial collision from the trio of V formation Bf 110s involved in a simultaneous towplane function, meant to be greatly eased with the substitution of the trio of Bf 110s with a single example of the unusual, twin fuselage Heinkel He 111Z purpose designed five engine towplane. The use of reaction assisted takeoff methods became especially important late in the war when the lengths of usable runways were severely curtailed due to the results of Allied bombing. Their system typically used jettisonable, self-contained Walter HWK 109-500 Starthilf takeoff help, also known as Rauschgerat smoke generator, unitized liquid fuel monopropellant rocket booster units whose engines driven by chemical decomposition of T-stoff essentially almost pure hydrogen peroxide, with a Z-stoff catalytic compound. A parachute pack at the blunt contour front of the Moda's exterior housing was used to slow its fall after being released from the plane, so the system could be reused. First experiments were held in 1937 on a Heinkel He 111, piloted by test pilot Eric Warsitz at Neuhardenberg, a large field about 70 km east of Berlin, listed as a reserve airfield in the event of war. Other German experiments with JATO were aimed at assisting the launch of interceptor aircraft such as the Messerschmitt Mi 262C, as the Heimaschutzer special versions, usually fitted with either a version of the Walter HWK 109-509 liquid-fueled rocket engine from the Mi 163 Comet program either in the extreme rear of the fuselage or semi potted beneath it just behind the wing's trailing edge, to assist its Junkers Jumo 004 turbojets, or a pair of specially rocket-boosted BMW 003R combination jet rocket powerplants in place of the Jumo 04s, so that the Mi-262C Heimaschutzer interceptors could reach enemy bomber formations sooner. 
Two prototypes of the Heimaschutzer versions of the Mi-262 were built and test flown, of the three designs proposed. In contrast to the wide variety of aircraft types that the HWK design Starthilf modular liquid monopropellant booster designs were tested with, seeing some degree of frontline use, the aforementioned solid-fueled Rato booster designs from both the Schmidting and WASAG firms remained almost strictly experimental in nature, with the Schmidting 500 kg thrust solid-fueled booster units intended to see service, quartet mounted per airframe for use with the Radical Bacham Ba 349 VTO rocket interceptor design in 1945, for its vertical launch needs. The strictly experimental, HWK 109-501 Starthilf Rato system used a similar bi-propellant motor to that on the Mi-163 B Comet rocket fighter, adding a 20 kg mass of a combination of B-stoff hydrazine, mixed with bridge stoff Ligroin hydrocarbon distillate for a main fuel to the T-stoff monopropellant still destabilized with the Z-stoff permanganate for ignition as the oxidizer, tripling the 109-500's thrust figure of 4.95 kN at 14.71 kN, 1,500 kg force with a burn of 30-second duration. Due to the hot Systems similar risks demanding similar special fueling and handling procedures to that of the Comet's 509A rocket motor, the 109-501 seems to have remained a strictly experimental design, only being used for the test flights of the Junkers Ju-287 V-1 prototype jet bomber. In early 1939, the National Academy of Sciences in the United States provided $1,000 to Theodore von Karman and the Rocket Research Group including Jack Parsons, Frank Molina, Edward Foreman and Apollo M. O. Smith at the Guggenheim Aeronautical Laboratory at the California Institute of Technology to research rocket-assisted takeoff of aircraft. This JATO research was the first rocket research to receive financial assistance from the U.S. government since World War I when Robert H. Goddard had an Army contract to develop solid-fuel rocket weapons. In late 1941 von Karman and his team attached several 50-pound thrust, solid-fuel Aerojet JATOs to a light aircoupe plane, and Army Captain Homer Boshi took off on test runs. On the last run they removed the propeller, attached six JATO units under the wings, and Boshi was thrust into the air for a short flight, the first American to fly by rocket power only. Both armed services used solid-fuel JATO during the war. <laughs> Post-World War II After World War II JATO was often used to overcome the poor thrust of early jet engines at low speeds or for assisting heavily loaded aircraft to take off. For example, the propeller-engined Avro Shackleton, when heavily laden with fuel for long maritime surveillance flights, relied on Armstrong Siddeley Viper turbojets for takeoff. The world's first jet airliner, the de Havilland DH-106 Comet, included a design provision to carry two hydrogen peroxide-powered de Havilland Sprite booster rockets intended to be installed for hot and high-altitude conditions from airports such as Khartoum and Nairobi. These were tested on 30 flights, but the de Havilland Ghost jet engines alone were considered powerful enough and some airlines concluded that rocket motors were impractical. Nevertheless, Sprite fittings were retained on production Comet 1s but were rendered unnecessary with subsequent engine upgrades. In the late 1950s, zero length launch experimental programs for launching fighter aircraft were carried out by the United States Air Force, the German Bundeswehr's Luftwaffe, and the Soviet VVS using high thrust, short burn duration booster designs of similar appearance and function. 
The USAF used a modified Republic F-84, designated EF-84G, which used the MGM-1 Matador cruise missile's Aerojet General design, 240 kN thrust-level solid fuel booster of two-second thrust duration. The Soviet VVS used a modified MiG-19 fighter, designated SM-30, launched from a special launcher, and using a nearly identical solid-fueled rocket booster design to that of the EF-84G, but of a much more powerful, 600 kN (64 short ton) thrust level. The F-100 and F-104 were also used for zero-length launch experiments, with similarly powerful drop-away booster units to the Soviets' SM-30 experiments. Also in the 1950s, the JATO Jr. was an attempt by Aerojet Engineering to introduce smaller JATO units to small commercial aircraft, but was blocked by the U.S. Navy Bureau of Aeronautics. Aerojet claimed that the smaller JATO bottle, delivering 200 150 pounds of thrust for 12 seconds could help a light private plane, that normally requires almost 900 feet of runway to clear a 50-foot high obstacle, could do the same with 300 feet of runway with a JATO Jr. unit. The Boeing 727 had provision for Aerojet JATO assist for use in hot and high conditions, particularly at Mexico City and La Paz. A JATO option was available for the Fairchild Swearingen Metroliner to increase takeoff weight while maintaining one engine inoperative climb requirements. In late 1980, the United States Military Operation Plan Operation Credible Sport was intended to rescue hostages held by Iran using C 130 cargo planes modified with rocket engines to enable a very short takeoff and landing. The plan was cancelled after an accident occurred during a test landing when the forward-facing JATO units designed to slow the aircraft fired before the downward-facing units designed to cushion the landing did, causing the aircraft to crash land. JATO became largely unnecessary as the takeoff thrust of jet engines improved and is now rarely used even when operating heavily laden from short runways or in hot and high conditions. It is occasionally used in exceptional circumstances, on specially equipped, mostly military, aircraft. <inaudible> <inaudible> Urban legend The JATO rocket car is an urban legend that relates the story of a car equipped with JATO units that is later found smashed into a mountainside. This story is often given as an example of a Darwin Award. It appears to be apocryphal, with no basis in fact. The legend has been examined several times on the Discovery Channel show Mythbusters. For the first attempt, in a 2003 pilot episode, the crew replicated the scene and the thrust of the JATO with some commercially available amateur rocket motors. The car did go very fast, outrunning the chase helicopter, but nowhere near the 300 miles per hour, 500 kilometers per hour reported in the original story, and failed to become airborne. The myth was revisited in 2007, using a different configuration of rockets in an attempt to make the car fly. It exploded before reaching the end of its launch ramp. The myth was again revisited in 2013 in the first episode of Mythbusters season 12, as a celebration of their tenth year on the air. A JATO-equipped 1958 Dodge Coronet car on the El Mirage Dry Lake was used for a TV advertisement to demonstrate the power of their total contact brakes. This was broadcast during the Lawrence Welk show in the late 1950s. Topic Gallery Topic See also Zero Length Launch